Brakatea Hawa, Brakatea Hawa Shai, Brakatea Hawa, Brakatea Hawa Shai, Brakatea Hawa, Brakatea Hawa Shai. Blessed be the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And blessed be the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, our Lord and our Savior. The elders of Israel being the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Shalom, Wahabla, Bakir, Shah, Yasharala, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Come back at y'all again with another lesson. Baha'u Chakadai Shah Amaf in the Holy Spirit of Truth. And um, the topic of this video is going in on the Third World War. All right, which we are approaching quickly. As the scriptures say, the second woe is past. Behold, the third woe comes quickly. And this third war, uh, this third world war, it's not going to be like World War One or World War Two. All right, long drawn out war. This is going to be quick. All right, the Lord said in the book of Zephaniah, I believe. I'm gonna just grab it. All right, that he's going to do away with this place quickly, all right, and violently, as it says in the book of Revelations, thus with violence shall Babylon be thrown down. Okay, so let's get the scripture in the book of Zephaniah, chapter 1 and verse 18. Neither the silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. We are approaching the day of the Lord's wrath. So that's what we should be preparing for. While everybody else is focused on bullshit, all right? Niggas is focused on 10 years in America, five years in America. You got Israelite groups focused on the wrong things. Israelite groups focused on getting land in America and building an Israelite community. This is, and then these niggas got the nerve to say something about us. We're focused on the day of the Lord because it's approaching very quickly. And we're trying to do everything that we can so that we can be found worthy all right, to escape the judgment that Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai is going to bring upon this world. All right. It says, neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be destroyed by the fire of his jealousy. This is speaking of America. OK, also known as the virgin daughter of Babylon, also known as spiritual Egypt and spiritual Sodom. This whole land is going to be devoured. All right. Via intercontinental. It just said. It said by the fire of his jealousy, by nuclear fire, intercontinental ballistic missiles. Right. For he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. This place is going to go down quickly and speedily, man. That says in the book of Revelations in one hour. All right. So great riches was turned to not was turned to nothing. Roughly paraphrasing, man. This is the day that we are looking for. The, 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 the day of the destruction of the land of our captivity. The day of the destruction of the most wicked kingdom. All right. Ever to rule on the planet Earth. All right. And also the day of our salvation, the day of our liberation. OK, the day where the Lord Yahweh sends his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, to set us free. Adawan Rataza, we be of that number. OK, so I got a couple articles. And before we go any further, um, I choose I chose this. Uh, this uh, still or this image, this screenshot, because this is prophecy. This is straight out the Bible. All right. Um, it says it in Revelations, and it also says it in Isaiah. Let's get it in Isaiah real quick, and then uh, and then I want to get into this article. This is and when we go into these articles, who's really doing that, man? You don't see IUIC pulling up articles and going into different information and lining it up with the prophecies and lining it up with the scriptures because they don't have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. And the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. You don't see General Yohanna going into lessons like this, like our apostles and our elders and like the men of Great Millstone. We are the ones measuring the time diligently within itself through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai. We are the ones. That the Lord put the spirit of prophecy uh, 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 within Okay Not these other groups man And when these things begin to come to pass Then you gonna know that a prophet has been among you Shit you got the nigga in IUIC Nate He was saying there's not gonna be no Jacob's trouble And then he switched it up It's scripture say metal not with them that's given on to change Okay but nonetheless this is the book of Isaiah chapter 34 Isaiah chapter 34, and I'm going to jump straight to the point. Isaiah 34 and verse 4. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. All right, and that's what we see right now. Uh, Isaiah was describing what he's seen in ancient terminology. So this, what does this look like? All right, the heavens being rolled together as a scroll. Modern day terms, they call this a mushroom cloud. Okay, which is the after effect when the missiles hit ground zero. 
And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and their host shall fall down, as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling tree, as a falling fig from the fig tree. That's the looping motion or the arcing fashion of the nuclear missiles. All right. It's, well, let me continue to read on. Verse five. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. The sword is the nuclear missiles. All right. Bathed in heaven, leaving, uh, uh, leaving the earth's atmosphere, going into the firmament. Right. And then hitting its um, target. And the main target is where? For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. Idumia is a, another cold word for America. All right. Is Idumia is the Greek way of saying Edom. Okay, and this is Edom's chief chief dwelling place. This this is the America is uh, how Edom or er, America is the country that Edom uses to control the whole world. Right. And upon the people of my curse to judgment, the Edomites. Right. And everybody that's joined with them. Okay. Everybody that's joined hand in hand with Esau, you're going to be punished with him. All right. That's why we have to arise and depart out of this bitch. Scripture say, woe unto you that go down to Egypt for help. Verse 6, the sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness. So there's going to be a lot of death. In World War um, One. I was just reading some stats on it. It said that over 240 million people died. Okay. So in this World War Three, it's going to be way more than that, man. All right. Could be triple, could be quadruple. All right. Could be five times more than that, okay? I don't know how much ten times more, but it could is it could get up in there in the it's it's going to get up there in the billions, man. The slain of the Lord shall be many. A lot of people is going to perish during this World War Three. The scriptures say the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. A lot of death is coming upon this world, and the only way to escape that death is if we're seeking Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai in truth and in sincerity. As Israelites, that is our reasonable service. As Israelites, that is our duty. Okay? Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Let us fear the Lord and keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. The sword of the Lord, Yahweh, is filled with blood. All right? So the missiles are going to take out a lot of motherfuckers, man. All right? Along with the chariot fire. All right? Uh, all them troops that's going to gather in the uh, Middle East, which is the Valley of Yahweh Shapat. All right? The Lord is going to turn all of them niggas into dust. Right. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord had a sacrifice in Basra again, speaking of America and a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. OK, so let's let's hop into this article now. Global military. Spending at the highest level, all right? Start off with this one. This is um, AA.com. I don't know what AA stands for, but all you got to do is Google it, right? It says global military spending hits highest level since 1988. Military uh, expenditure totals nearly two trillion dollars in 2020 accounting for 2.4 percent accounting for 2.4 percent of global gdp okay and this is all prophecy hold up this is not the one i wanted i want to get on rooters but there was one that I was looking at earlier Um, Salakia, bear with me. Satan, I don't wanna. Well, this is an article. I, I did a video on this uh, um, a while back, earlier on this year. Nukes of hazard. Russia set to test 15,000 mile per hour nuke missile that can beat any defense and destroy Texas. Why did? Why doesn't Russia say, yeah, this can destroy China? This can destroy South African countries. This will take out Toronto and Canada. It ain't nobody worried about that. Everybody is aiming at, at America. Okay? North Korea test the missile. Yeah, this can fuck up California. Okay? China test the missile. This will blow up all of New York. Everybody is aiming at Babylon. Everybody is aiming at Idumia. 
I Bajra. Okay? This is not what I wanted. Right, this one. I think it's this one. Government spend trillions on weapons, claim there is no money for health care. As governments as governments around the world last year rejected measures to contain COVID-19 on the grounds that there was no money to pay for them, the world spent unprecedented sums on nuclear weapons, tanks, and missiles. The whole world, all right, the whole world was uh, um, spent more, all right, these different um, governments of this world spent more um, money on their military and on weapons and on missiles and tanks than ever uh, than in, in like the last 30 years, okay? It says unprecedented sums on nuclear weapons, okay? And why are they doing that? Because war is about to take place. As the Bible says, it would take place. So let me get this prof. Let me get this precept. So I can. Let me get this precept in the book of Joel. This is Joel, chapter three, and verse nine. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. So this is what this is what we see taking place. The Gentiles are gearing for war, preparing for war. Right? Verse 10. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Beat your plowshares into swords. That's weapons, right? Tanks, nuclear missiles. That falls under the category of swords. And your pruning hooks into spears also falls under the category of all those things I just mentioned. All those things the article just mentioned, right? Weapons, nuclear missiles, tanks, all right? This this prophecy coming into fruition. All these nations are preparing for war. Beat your plowshares into swords. So fuck everything else. It was a whole global pandemic last year. They said, fuck the damn pandemic. Fuck the health, all that bullshit. We getting ready for this war. Like the prophecy says in Joel 3 and 10. All right, this is the book of life and the words are speaking. Habakkuk. It says, at the end it shall speak. The vision is yet for an appointed time. At the end it shall speak and not lie. We're reading the article that's uh, 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 showing this prophecy coming into fruition. Okay? Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Okay, and the weak is saying that they're strong because what? They're also getting nuclear capability. Okay? It says, uh, I'll continue on. We're going to read some more in that Joel, but let me continue on in here first. It says, the United States, which spends more on its military than the next 10 countries combined, increased its military spending by 4.4%. So, the, the U.S. spends more on its military than, in, than all these other countries. Right? And that shows you that this place is the hammer of the earth. Okay? This that shows you right there that this place is Babylon. Okay? This the America is putting what? What did it say? 77 8 billion on its military last year alone. That's over half. That's over half their government um budget spending. Okay? Look it up. Over half of it going to war. Going to military, going to weapons and uh, 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 nuclear missiles and tanks. Okay? This is the book of Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 4. Thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased? The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. Your power is being taken away from you. All right? Your, your rulership is, is being taken away from you, right? Verse 6, he who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and unhindereth. All right, and this, this is this talking about Babylon. This is the place that's been going to war nonstop, all right? It says in the book of Revelation, the sixth chapter, it was given unto him a great sword to take peace. Uh, uh, it was given unto re the red horse a great sword to take peace from the earth. Since America has been in rulership, there ain't been no peace. 
All right. Since Esau Edom came out of them caves, there ain't been no fucking peace. All right. It's been nonstop war, nonstop hell upon the earth. And that's why when this devil goes down, the whole world is going to rejoice. The earth is going to rejoice. The water, the air, the food, the trees, the animals, the people is going to rejoice. It says when the righteous bear rule, the people more, uh, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. All right. So let's get this precept. Salakia. Yeah. And the Lord said he's going to make this. Um, he's going to make uh, America a burnt mountain. OK, this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 23. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How is Babylon become a desolation among the nations? This is speaking of America. Obviously, America is the hammer of the earth because it's spending more on its military than the next countries, next 10 countries combined. OK, and still increasing. All right. It's military spending. All right. But this, the, but the hammer of the earth, the bully of the earth, is about to get his ass knocked the fuck out, man. All right? It says, the United States, which spends more on its military than the next 10 countries combined, increased its military spending by 4.4% compared to the year before. The country outlay some $77.8 billion on its military last year alone. The data comes from an annual report by the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute. Uh, which has tracked global military spending going back over 30 years. Total global military spending rose to nearly two trillion last year, up 2.6 percent from a year ago after adjusting af after adjusting for inflation. Amazingly, the growth took place even as world economic output shrank by 4.4 percent. As a result, military spending as a share of the global economy surged by the highest level in a decade all right so all these other nations know what's gonna go down okay ain't nobody worried about no damn c19 ain't nobody worried about that shit all right not not the elites okay they're looking for war all right it says the cipri noted the, the uh, that the massive surge in U.S. military spending is attributed to the policy now spanning three presidents of massive massively building up its military and conventional forces in preparation for great power conflicts with Russia and China. So America is beefing up its military and beating its plowshares into swords and its pruning hooks into spears because why? Well, according to this article, it says America is getting ready. Is preparing. For great power conflicts with Russia and with China. That's biblical prophecy. That's straight out the Bible. Okay, let's get that. This is the book of Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse 1. And the word and the word of the Lord Yahweh came unto me saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog. Gog and Magog is talking about Russia. Okay? That's the Russians today, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. And, and uh, Russia is going back into that Soviet Union mentality. Okay, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws and I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, all right, Persia being known today as Iran, all right, Persia changed his name. Uh, Persia changed his name from I uh, from Persia to Iran in 1935. All right, and that's one of Russia. Uh, that's one of Russia's greatest allies. That's one of Gog and Magog's greatest allies, the Iranians. Right? It says Ethiopia and Libya with them. And I did a lesson uh, last year how uh, Russia is um, making pacts and, and covenants with um, different African countries, right? Giving them weapons, trading with them. Look it up. It's worth the Google. All of them with shield and helmet. Gomer, all right, being uh, Turkey. It says, and all his bands, the house, uh, the house of Togermor of the North Quarters and all his bands and many people with thee. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee and thou 
and it's like and be thou a guard unto them. Okay, so the Lord is putting the, the Lord is gearing up Russia to go to war with America, as we just read. And, and also America is getting ready to go to war with Russia and also China. And even America's allies is going to turn on them. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 13 and verse 17. Behold, I will stir up the Medes, the Russians, right, against them, the Babylonians, which shall not regard silver. And as for gold, they shall not delight in it, as that Zephaniah that we read. Right. Their gold and their silver shall not be able to save them. And the Lord will make a speedy riddance and devour this whole land with the fire of his jealousy. Roughly paraphrasing that Zephaniah that we started off with. Their bowls also shall dash the young men to pieces. Their bowls shall dash the young men into pieces. Right. When no missiles get shot off. It said that the missiles uh, we just read that briefly read that article. Russia is testing a, a missile that can go 15,000 miles per hour and can destroy all of Texas. Again, why don't they say, yeah, this is going to take out Mexico. Yeah, we're going to shoot this missile. It's going to take out um, Canada, right? Some some city in Canada. No, they're aiming at America. This is the target, right? Their bows shall dash their young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of their, their the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency shall be as when Yahweh overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. All right, so America is going to be destroyed the same way as Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed via uh, via fire and brimstone. Same way America is going to be destroyed via fire and brimstone. All right, intercontinental ballistic missiles is going to rain upon this place. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm kind of short on time, so I best be getting wrapped up. Let's see what this is talking about. Rooters, Rooters usually has a little... Little extra. Oh, look at this. It's um, Salakia. Global military spending uh, hits highest level since 1988. Since 1988, man. Okay, that's damn near 30 years. Um, global military spending rises 2.6 percent in 2020 despite pandemic hit. Global military expenditure rose by 2.6% to $1.9 trillion last year, even as some defense funds were reallocated to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. The Stockholm International Peace Research Institute said in a report issued on Monday, the five biggest spenders in 2020, which together accounted for 62% of military spending worldwide, so these five countries... Accounted for 62, more than half percent of the military spending worldwide, right? It says, were the United States, China, India, Russia, and Britain in that order, right? So, we just read about Gog and Magog. We just read about the Medes being stirred up. Russia, right? And they're a part of the top five spenders of mil uh, uh, of uh, military um, uh, spent funding, Okay. We can say with some certainty that the pandemic did not have a significant impact on global military spending in 2020. All right, CIPRI researcher Diego Lopez da Silva said in a statement, as, a, as global GDP declined because the pandemic military spending as a share of GDP reached a global average of 2.4% in 2020, up from 2.2% in 2019. However, some countries such as Chile, uh, that's pretty much, I mean, you can you can read on this. This is on Reuters. Like I said, I'm short on time and I'd rather just finish this precept in Joel. Okay, so this is the book of Joel, chapter 3, and verse 10. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord Yahweh. So the angels is, the angels is getting ready too. All right, everybody else is flexing their muscles, testing this missile, testing that missile, showing some of their artillery. All right, what well, the Lord been showing off too. Then you get a glimpse of this chariot. Showing off that chariot, all right? Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Yahweh Shapat. Yahweh Shapat means is ancient Hebrew for the Lord's judgment, the Heavenly Father's judgment. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest for the harvest is ripe. Get you down, for the press is full. 
the fats overflow for their wickedness is great. All right. Wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth. So the Lord is going to send death and destruction, and sword, famine and plagues, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. That's all these armies, the Chinese army, the Japanese army, the Russian army, the U.S. army, the Britain army. All these different armies is going to gather in the Middle East, which is the valley of Yahweh Shabbat. Um, it says uh, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The day of the Lord is, is near and is coming quickly. So that's what we're preparing ourselves for, seeing that these things will be dissolved. What manner of persons ought you to be in our holy and godly conversation? Right. That's how we're supposed to be. That's how we're supposed to be thinking. That's how we're supposed to be speaking. That's how we're supposed to be moving holy and godly departing from this place. All right. So having that said, I don't want to write this out. I was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Rachachadash. Yahweh is the true, holy, powerful, and mighty name of the Heavenly Father. And Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, powerful, and mighty name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and our Savior. Rachachadash is the Holy Spirit that speaks through us, that allows us to rightly divide the word of truth and teach the word correctly and directly. Today, elders of Israel being the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. And Shalom wa abla baki yasha yasha which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Shalom wa you brothers keep on pushing, stay sober, stay diligent, stay faithful, stay prayed up. Salvation draweth nigh and redemption is near than we believe. Shalom.